Hello and welcome to the Portstead Road and High Road Transforming Cities Fund presentation. My name is Andrew Omden. I'm a Senior Communications Officer at Southampton City Council. I'm joined by my colleague Emma Baker, who is a Senior Transport Planner at Southampton City Council. Uh, we will be your presenters today, taking you through uh, the survey findings that we recently conducted in the area, talking through some of the options that we could be looking at in terms of improving transport and travel in the Portswood Road High Road area. And uh, we're also joined by a couple of moderators. We've got Wade Holmes of Southampton City Council, Wilson Massey of Balfour Beatty and Zoe Byrne of Southampton City Council. You may or may not hear from them. Um, their role is to monitor the questions coming in to us and uh, post those to us. But obviously, if we need to hand over to them to get a little bit more detail and stuff, we can. So just to let you know, if you are using the Microsoft Live event on your laptop, you should have a function on the right hand side that allows you to go into a Q&A where you can ask a question at any point during this presentation. We will be um, reading those out during the question and answer session later on. If you're on your phone, uh, it takes you to a separate page that will pause the presentation so you won't miss anything. So if you have any questions, do feel free to ask us. Uh, without further ado, I will hand over to Emma, who will uh, take you through the first element of the presentation here. Hello, um, as Andrew said, my name's Emma and I'm a transport planner here at Southampton City Council. I'm just going to um, set out the kind of policy context that will um, provide the, the backbone of the measures uh, that we identify um, as part of this project and also um, how it will be funded. Um, so just to give you a bit of an idea, uh, we um, adopted the Connecting Southampton Transport Strategy, uh, which is a long term strategy up to 2040 uh, back in 2019. This sets out the policy framework that will be used to identify um, measures uh, to um, improve uh, or deliver along the Portswood um, corridor and um, and help deliver uh, improvements in the area. Um, so this uh, policy is developed around three uh, core themes, uh, which is a better way to uh, a better way to travel, um, encouraging healthy, active and clean um, transport choices, a system for everyone. Uh, so transport is safe, inclusive and attractive and it's a successful Southampton. So thinking about making sure that Southampton is well connected and resilient um, to the wider transport network, such as the motorway. Um, in order to do this, um, the uh, policy sets out aspirations to create a, a livable city, which is a city that is easy to walk and cycle um, and also attractive um, for, for residents. This uh, the second aspiration um, is to create a mass transit system, uh, which is a public transport system, uh, which better connects, uh, is reliable and is integrated with other forms of transport. It's worth noting as well that um, there are sub strategies uh, to the Connecting Southampton policy framework, including the cycling strategy, um, and it also complements the Green Charter. Uh, so the slide you can hear now just gives a uh, gives you the background on the Transforming Cities project. Um, so this was um, a joint funding bid between Southampton City Council and Hampshire County Council, as well as other partners. Uh, the DFT, uh, which is the Department for Transport, awarded um, the council £57 million to transform uh, the transport network. So this will focus on how people travel, uh, lifestyles and gateways. So thinking about things like transport interchanges and also public um, spaces. It's also um, worth noting that there's also an 11.5 million contribution um, from the City Council and also the other partners um, that are supporting the bid. The, so the, the programme is set around um, four key corridors that connect residents um, to key uh, destinations such as employment hubs uh, and also uh, places like city, the city centre and also um, the town centre in Eastleigh. 
So what we're going to be talking about today is uh, what you can see on the map, the green corridor. So this corridor connects Bishop Stoke and Fair Oak to Eastleigh and Eastleigh to Southampton city centre via the airport and the Portswood corridor. So what you can see on the screen now are the four key challenges that were identified um, in the Transforming Cities bid uh, and, and uh, set out how uh, and, and the, the programme will be developed uh, to address these measures. So uh, just to, to give a, a, big, a brief overview on this, um, two of the key challenges um, is um, addressing congestion which is set to increase over the coming years as planned growth is realised. This will see uh, an increased number of trips coming into Southampton and the wider city region. Um, and it, these trips will also have an impact on the reliability and journey times of the bus network. What we know about the bus network already um, is that we have a, a very good network where patronage is high we have the fifth highest patronage outside of London across um, England and uh, public transport um, is increasing. Uh, one of the other challenges that we're looking to address is rising inequalities, uh, which is of particular um, uh, interest to this corridor study um, due to areas of deprivation in the area. So what you can see on the slide now is why we're looking at High Road and Portswood Road corridor as part of the Transforming Cities programme. So what we know already is that around a third of trips that leave um, Eastleigh end up in Southampton and around a third of trips that um, leave Southampton end up in Eastleigh. Um, so there's a significant uh, that shows the importance of this corridor um, in terms of the connectivity uh, between the two. Um, it's also worth noting that there are over 2,800 households within a 20 minute walk of the high road area. Um, so in terms of um, local businesses, um, we, under, we uh, think that there is an opportunity to increase the number of people that are walking and cycling to the area. Um, it's worth flagging as well that we know this is not true of all trips. Um, however, we think there's a substantial potential there. Um, in terms of the importance of the corridor, um, it also links to key employment sites, both in the city centre um, and uh, throughout the city. So places like the university and the hospital, as well as business parks and the airport. What we also know about this corridor is that a number of vehicles that use it do not stop on the corridor itself and they are therefore passing through. So there's an opportunity for us to potentially remove some of the trips that come down this corridor onto parallel routes such as Thomas Lewis Way. The next slide that you can see now just shows some of the key transport um, statistics um, for the Portswood Road uh, corridor. So we know that around 7,500 um, vehicles use the corridor per day and that around 20,000 vehicles use the Thomas Lewis Way corridor. In terms of car ownership across um, the city, uh, sorry, the city region, we know that about 22% do not have a car. This increases to about 51% in some parts of Southampton, particularly um, areas of deprivation. The Portswood Road corridor is well served by buses and there's around 26 buses per hour. However, these are severely impacted in the peak periods, particularly in the uh, PM peak. Uh, the Portswood Corridor also has good links to the cycle network uh, via SCN6. And we know that around 4.8% of commuters in Southampton cycle to work. Just in comparison, the, the national average for cycle trips to work is 2%. Uh, so we've already got a good level of cycling across the city. 
It's also worth noting that there are excellent um, rail connections uh, along the Portswood Road corridor and that passenger numbers are growing. The, the uh, graph that you can see on the right hand side uh, shows the results of the bike life survey that was undertaken in 2019. And this shows that around 69% of the respondents support uh, improvements or sorry, in increased spending on public transport and around 61% um, would like to see more spend on cycling. And so I'm going to hand over to Andrew now, who's just going to go over um, the results of the early perception survey that we conducted and that will be used to help inform the development of options along this corridor. Thank you very much, Emma. So we held a perception survey from the 30th of September to the 9th of November, and that was sent out to homes and businesses within a 400 metre radius of the Ports of Road High Road corridor. Um, that, as Emma noted previously, is just over 2,800 homes. We had 71 responses, which is a response rate of 2.73%. Usually when you're sending a mail drop like this, you'd expect a response rate of between 4 and 5%. So it's a little bit lower than we might have hoped. But um, we know that a lot of houses in this area are HMOs, houses of multiple occupancy, and a lot of student accommodation, which may account for the low response rate. So um, the map on the left hand side there is the same map you've seen previously, just showing that 400 metre radius we sent the letters to and invited people to participate in the survey. As you'd imagine, having sent it to that area, a majority of respondents who came back to us said that they live within a 20 minute walk of the shops along Portsford Road or High Road. Here you can just see those uh, that graph turned into numbers, 92.96% saying that they do live within a 20 minute walk. We then asked what the main mode of transport when traveling to Portsmouth Road or High Road shops was. Uh, it's interesting that there's a bit of a mixed response here with around 42% saying that they walk and around 40% saying they use the car. Um, other options people said is that they cycle or walk as their main mode of transport. So here you go, once again, you can just see that in, in number form, that graph there. So following this, we asked a supplementary question because that question was uh, concerned with understanding people's main mode of transport. So we wanted to know, do respondees use other modes of transport to travel through this area? And if so, why? So this was uh, a free text box and respondees noted that they tend to use buses, cycles and cars if traveling beyond the local area or when they're going shopping. So we selected some sample comments just to, uh, at random to kind of illustrate a flavor of the comments we received. Sometimes use the bus if not shopping for too many items and for going for a pint. Car, walk and cycle when passing through. I sometimes drive, catch the bus or cycle through the area on my way into the town centre. Drive if I'm with my flatmate who's autistic and doesn't like buses. Cycle if I'm on my own during the day or bus if I'm going out at night. I walk to Swathling shops and drive to Portswood. I go to Portswood Sainsbury's weekly and Swathling very rarely. So we start to get a picture of the sorts of ways people travel and uh, start to understand that there's a variety of modes of transport depending on people's purpose. So the next question we asked was, what is your main reason for traveling to Portsmouth Road or High Road? And overwhelmingly, people said that their main reason was for shopping. We got a small minority saying that they passed through the area and uh, some people that gave an other response, which we will cover off in just a moment. The next question we asked was, would respondees like to see any of the following improvements made to Portsmouth Road and or High Road? Uh, the largest response came back for separated cycle lanes. Again, we had some people saying other, and this will be covered off in just a moment. High responses also for widening the footpath and more car parking. So you can see these in uh, number form here. Separated cycle lane fitting 30% response rate. Uh, around 21 respondees out of the 70 who did answer the question. So another supplementary question was asked after this. Are there any improvements you would like to see the council make to improve travel and transport in the wider Portswood and Swadling area? So this is where we start to get an understanding of what those other responses were. So respondees provided a variety of suggestions regarding improvements that could be made to the area. These included 
removing street clutter, improving traffic light sequency and introducing cycle lanes and improving reliability and frequency of bus services. There were some specific issues raised related to disabled access to bus stops, particularly due to a lack of, of drop curbs. Uh, and there were also specific mentions of improving pedestrian access in the Woodmill Bridge Woodmill Lane area. Some respondees commented that the council should improve parking facilities in the area, while others suggested that um, we remove the on-street parking altogether. There are also a handful of comments suggesting the council should offer bus subsidies or reduce the cost of public transport. Uh, it's important to note that this isn't something the council could directly affect because obviously it's set by the bus companies themselves. Uh, and also to note that the Transforming Cities Fund programme is related specifically to improving transport infrastructure in the area. So, you know, this isn't something we can do within this project, but looking at other things like mentioned previously, improving reliability and frequency of bus services is something that we can look at. So some sample comments just to illustrate a flavour of the, the comments we received in this section. I use a double wide push chair and most pavements are too cluttered to use. More buses per hour. Some parts could be cleaned up to make walking more pleasant. More reliable buses. Reduce speed limit along Portswood Road and restrict through traffic. And every time I cross the street, I feel like I'm running for my life. There should be better signalised crossings and pedestrians should have priority in them. We asked respondees uh, about the temporary cycle lanes that have been introduced in Portswood to support social distancing and encourage active travel. We asked whether they would support them, these being uh, made longer term. And a majority of people said yes, that they would. Those numbers there, so 67.61% saying yes, 22.54% saying no, and 9.86% saying don't know. We also asked whether people agreed with the council's green city charter commitments to encourage sustainable travel and improve air quality across the city. Once again, overwhelmingly people said yes. 76.06% saying they agree. 15.49% saying unsure and 8.45% saying they disagree. In addition to the survey, we also had some telephone conversations with businesses in the area. So the purpose of the phone call was just to get in touch with businesses, made sure they'd received the survey first and foremost, ask them to participate and just have a quick conversation with them about sort of the content of the survey and the sorts of things that they would like to see changed in the area or improved in the area. Largely, businesses seem to comment that the area gets particularly busy in the morning and the late afternoon during the rush hour periods. But aside from this, the general feeling was that traffic and transport in the area wasn't too bad, but it could benefit from being tidied up a bit. So what have we learned from the survey? Well, there's support for introducing segregated cycle lanes in the area, and there's a feeling that the area could benefit from reducing street clutter and a general tidy up. There are some specific issues relating to disabled access to bus stops, and with pedestrian and cycle access to Woodmill Bridge, Woodmill Lane area. Respondees indicated that the area could benefit from more parking facilities. And while walking and car are the main methods of transportation, many respondees also take the bus as a secondary option and would like to see services improved. At this point, I'm gonna hand back to Emma, who's gonna take us through some of the options we could review as part, uh, as part of this project. Thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, so as Andrew said, uh, we can see from the results that there is support for walking, cycling and public transport improvements. So the next couple of slides are just going to set out some potential options of what could be done. It's worth noting at this stage that these are potential options um, and that these will be developed um, as part of the engagement of the ongoing engagement programme and as the, the project is um, developed. Um, so some potential measures that we could look at include reclaiming um, some, some street space which could be designated for walking and cycling to create more attractive streets where people feel safe uh, traveling by those modes. Uh, it could also include um, improvements to cycle infrastructure um, along the uh, SCN6 route, uh, which to ensure it connects um, into Beavis Valley and Stoneham Way. Um, we could also uh, look to construct uh, wider pavements um, and also provide new and improved uh, crossing facilities such as raised junctions um, or crossings. We could also look to in introduce continuous crossings across side roads, 
which would help prioritise uh, pedestrian movements more. So what we can see um, in the picture above is an example of a continuous footway that's been um, constructed elsewhere in the city. So the next slide here just shows some of the uh, public transport measures that we could look to potentially deliver. So this includes things like bus lanes and bus only restrictions that prioritise bus um, movements. We could also look to introduce traffic signal upgrades with bus detection, which would ensure that they are able to travel through traffic signals um, a bit uh, more efficiently. Uh, we could also look to introduce enhanced bus stop facilities that provide people with um, more waiting space and also better passenger information. Um, as also mentioned, Thomas Lewis Way forms part of uh, this corridor study. So we're looking at the Portswood Road and Thomas Lewis Way uh, corridors. And this is likely to include things like uh, traffic signal upgrades just to improve the efficiency of the corridor, along with um, and better uh, real time information informing people of estimated journey times, for example. Um, as part of the Transforming Cities programme, we're also looking to deliver a number of mobility hubs, including one in the area of Portswood. So this would um, provide people with additional transport options such as cycle hire and potentially e-scooter hire. So just giving people uh, more um, options when travelling uh, within the city. So at this point, uh, we'd like to open up to any questions you may have. Uh, Wilson, have we received any questions on the Q&A function? Have a question. Uh, Terry has asked, um, curious to the number of people travelling into the area, do you factor in employee employees of individual businesses as we em employ 10 staff, all of which travel from outside the area? So this came in just after we'd gone through the um, the the research findings uh, and obviously that those results relate to um, those who responded to the survey um, but possibly Emma Emma covered more general study of the area um, so maybe yeah. a question for both of you yeah, sure. So um, the, the figures that I um, went over in terms of a third of people travelling into um, Southampton and a third of people travelling um, from Southampton towards Eastleigh, uh, that is a, a figure, a, a general uh, figure, uh, which we've taken from um, our transport model. So the model um, contains um, the information for the number of trips um, into and out of the city. Um, however, it's important to note that this model is being used to will, will be used to help um, assess um, measures and also um, to develop uh, a, a baseline of the number of trips that are moving across the corridor. Yeah, I think um, in terms of the survey, the survey was sent out obviously to the 400 metre radius. So uh, it's primarily people who were just within that area, but it was sent to businesses as well. And we did ask when we had our phone calls with businesses that they encourage uh, staff members to participate in the survey. I think I'd just add to Emma's note there that um, we get our information from census data um, conducted by the Office of National Statistics. And uh, we just get general information as well from our, our travel plan network. So various sources for this information. Uh, thank you very much for your question, Terry. Are there any others, Wilson? Um, yes, so Terry's just uh, put in another question. Um, will you publish or provide regular updates on progress plans as the project progresses? This has been useful as I wasn't aware of the surveys. Also, um, a, cap a capture rate of 71 may be seen as disappointing. Thank you very much, Terry. Um, so yes, as I mentioned with the, the 71 capture rate, uh, it is slightly lower than possibly the four to 5% that we might expect from a usual door drop uh, letter. Um, we think that might be partly because it's a lot of students in, in the area from what our understanding and a lot of HMOs. Um, 
But, you know, this is an initial perception survey, so no decisions are really being made based off the back of this survey. We still have a lot of engagement to do. Um, to touch on the, uh, Wilson, do you mind just rem reminding me of the first part of the question there, please? So yes, Terry was interested if we were going to publish or provide regular updates on progress. Yes, plans. yes, of, of course we are. Um, we do have a dedicated website for this. Um, I'll be giving the web address for that in just a moment. We will be sending out regular newsletters that I will also provide you with a website link that you can sign up to. And, um, you know, it's always just worth checking in on our, our Twitter feed because um, we do update on, on progress. So we recently had a scheme down in Beavers Valley, for example, that completed, um, which was to improve, you know, cycle facilities, improve uh, traffic lights and, and lighting systems down there. That's recently improved and we will be promoting that to, and hopefully getting some case studies to, of, of people who've used it to, to hear how they feel about it. Um, are there any further questions, Wilson? Uh, no, that's it for now. Um, I, in response to Terry, I'm just putting the web link in for, for him to be able to click on. Excellent. Just on that. So that's it. Thank you very much. So yes, um, as I sort of touched on there, it's important to note that this event is the first stage of our engagement programme. Obviously, we've conducted the perception survey, uh, which was sent out as a letter drop. Um, this event was then uh, inviting businesses and stakeholders in the area to learn about the results of the survey. We are recording this event and we will be popping this online um, in the near future so people will be able to view this at their leisure. The next stage of engagement is planned for early 2021 and will be open to the wider public. Exactly how that event is going to be run is something that we are still trying to determine. Obviously, there's lots of factors that have come into play, particularly um, COVID. In normal times, we probably would have gone door to door with the survey. We would have spoken to people face to face, would have had sit down meetings. And then the next stage of engagement, we would have held a large public event in a, in a city hall or town hall or something. Obviously, with everything going on, that's unlikely to happen. So it'll be another virtual digital event and we're just still trying to work out how best for that to run. So if you have any comments or questions at this stage about the proposals, we'd ask that you email roadworks at southampton.gov.uk and we will try to answer any questions or queries in a timely manner. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about the Swathing Transforming Cities Fund project, you can do so at our website, which is transport dot southampton dot gov dot uk slash swathling and if you would like to sign up for updates you can do so at the following link um, the following link is case sensitive so please do be aware of that uh, and it will take you through to a newsletter sign up that we'll be sending out on a fairly regular basis with a bit more information and progress on what's going on in the area uh, that link is bit dot lee bit dot ly slash portswood dash swathling TCF, all lowercase. So I think all that's left really is to uh, thank you very much for coming along. On behalf of myself, Emma, Wilson, Wade and Zoe, thank you very much for coming along. Um, as I say, if you do have any questions, the, the link, the email address is the best place to go there. We will be holding more future events and um, thank you for your time. <laughs>